I used to power walk every day from uh, the North Station train station to the financial district. And uh, I was one of these very competitive walkers that walked very fast. And I found that over a period of time I was getting shortness of breath. I found it more difficult to do the walk every day. I could tell something was wrong. I had a few nosebleeds along the way. I could feel um, I wasn't quite as strong as, as I should be. So I thought it was time for, for that annual physical to get it checked up. He said that I had high protein levels and I should see an oncologist. She diagnosed this rare lymphoplasmacytic lymphoma for which there's about 1,500 people diagnosed each year in the U.S. So I asked her, how many patients have you treated for this Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia? And she said she hadn't. And I said, well, what do you know about it? And she said it was a, it was a trick question in med school. <laughs> it was not a very common cancer. Actually, my first reaction was, how are we going to fix this? I just had this sort of innate belief in science that somehow we would find a solution to this problem. I think anybody uh, diagnosed with a cancer, with a rare, incurable cancer, it, it will change your lifestyle. You start to think about things differently. Um, my first priority was to get it fixed. There has to be some way out of this. And when I looked at the outcome for those patients after they began treatment, at that time, the outcome was about five years. And that's not a very impressive number, at least from, from my standpoint. I had much more reason to be around, great family, great daughters, grandchildren. Exploring what the options were, there was nothing that was immediately appealing. Now, I started with some traditional therapy and didn't respond to those. So then I began a series of very targeted molecular agents, um, you know, which we're now seeing evolve into personalized medicine or precision medicine. This whole targeting concept seemed to me much safer and much more effective than the conventional chemotherapy that has been around for a long time. So I chose door number three, which was this targeted therapy. There was certainly some guessing in it, but you know, a lot of work had been done in the research labs at places like Dana-Farber and Mayo Clinic and MD Anderson. So there was some pretty compelling evidence also, an incredible amount of guidance from my oncologist, from my medical team, who I trusted implicitly. You actually develop a relationship, a partnership, in looking at what your care options are. You know, these physicians have to collect a lot of evidence, a lot of information. And I think the more educated the patient is, the more involved you are, um, the better off in working with your doctor. On the congressional and lawmaker side, yeah, there's a, there's a crying need for update and legislation. We're not keeping up with the state of the art in medical technology. So this whole idea of fail first or step therapy that says, you know, we want to keep our pharmaceutical costs low, so let's ask patients to fail first to try the least expensive therapy, and then after you fail, then you can move on to the more expensive. This is very short-minded. When you do the math, it's cost us far more than necessary. And this is an, an example of something we need to fix. There are many areas of legislation that we need to update and I've spent a lot of time with some really good organizations setting up meetings with congressmen. Our elected officials need more education and I think it's the patient's voice that's perhaps most effective. I really do have faith in science. I'm convinced that we will find a fix for this, that there are a number of options available. I belong to a group, it's an advocacy group called the International Waldenstrom's Macroglobulinemia Foundation. And it's a group of patients who, um, who actually do their own funding. We raise money every year to help fund research. One of the compelling changes for me was to gracefully retire from my work as an investment research and to become a research advocate, really to get involved in many volunteer circles. And I'm the New England support group leader for Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia. It kind of helps me stay grounded working with patients. I'm certainly not a licensed clinical social worker or anything like that, but I think all of this volunteer and being on the road and getting on the cover of Cancer Today magazine from AACR was a boost. People started asking for my opinion and for my thoughts. My feeling is that it is now our turn to step up. I mean, sooner or later, the question of cancer uh, and the topic of cancer will show up at your breakfast table. We're all affected by it, but I'm doing well and uh, ready to keep up the fight. <laughs>